Welcome to the Cisco Little Big Awards. I'm James Bedford coming to you live from the Cisco TV studios in London. We use the internet every day on our computers, on our tablets and our mobile phones. You can watch TV, make phone calls, send photos and shop all on the internet. But did you know that only 40% of the world's population has an internet connection today? In 1995, it was less than 1%. The first billion people connected to the internet was reached in 2005, the second billion in 2010, and the third billion only last year in 2014. This means that today, 60% of the world's population is not connected to the internet. At Cisco, we believe that only 2% of all things are connected to the internet. And we are on a mission to connect the unconnected, including that 60% of the world's population. And by the unconnected, we mean anything. Trees, dogs, bees, even you. We call this the internet of everything. What benefits would there be if you could connect your microwave, central heating, your car, or even your school workbooks to the internet? It's a really exciting thought. The Cisco Little Big Awards is a science, technology, engineering, maths challenge. We call it STEM for short. We want you to show us your ideas for the future of the internet. What would you connect to the internet? Imagine the possibilities of what could happen if you connect the unconnected. We're going to be giving you an awful lot of information today. So if you have any questions, then why not tweet us? using hashtag LittleBigAwards. We have a panel of people ready to answer your questions. But now, let's take a look at the impact of the internet today and some ideas for the future. the internet for everything. <laughs> I now do all my banking online. I like connecting to my friends. You know, watching movies, catching up on news. I use it to watch Netflix. Being able to communicate with people from all over the world at any time. I video chat with my grandma and grandpa that live all the way in North Carolina. I don't have to miss Easter just because I'm out of town. I can just video chat and it's like I'm there. The internet is how I met my wife. Uh, well, I've been on senior singles a few times. <laughs> I'm learning Japanese and Spanish online. I take a math course. I carved my own bow and arrow just out of looking at a YouTube video. What would I do without the internet? <laughs> I would say, hmm. Without the internet, I probably couldn't function. <laughs> like, just imagine it. Like, no Netflix, no YouTube, no Google. It wouldn't be nice. Okay, picture this. In 10 years, I'd like to live in a house that knows when I'm home. As soon as you get in your driveway, you can press a button and everything kind of just goes on and gets ready for you. I foresee robots. Just have a button and you click it and it turns into a robot and it can do your homework, your chores. Sounds pretty far-fetched, but I think it can happen. In 10 years, I can envision a network where automobiles and GPS and computers and the internet are all working together. I think there will be a lot less accidents. Probably don't have to actually go to school anymore. I can have a personal tutor online. It might even be an artificial intelligence. They could have holograms. A virtual reality world. I'd like to see the ability to do medical diagnosis just by standing in front of my computer. Our lifespans within 10 years I think are going to increase dramatically. It's going to be around you everywhere. It's going to be part of the class of the household, part of your everyday objects. As a result we're going to be more connected to everyone. I think 10 years from now almost hopefully the whole world could be connected. That would be amazing. I think that the world kind of becomes smaller and I think that smaller sense of the world can be a good thing.
Wow, exciting stuff. The world truly will become smaller when we connect everything. And I bet your teachers are sitting there right now shaking in their boots because robots might take their jobs in the next five to ten years. The Cisco Little Big Awards have been running in a small number of regions for many years, but this year we're taking it national. Cisco is partnering with STEMnet to help connect schools with STEM ambassadors around the country. And because you're watching this show, your school is participating. And you have the chance to transform the world with your ideas. Cisco is working with the BBC to support the BBC Microbit initiative to get millions of programmable devices into the hands of young people just like you. But what's a microbit, I hear you ask? Well, let's take a look. The microbit is a pocket-sized computer that lets you get creative with digital technology. You can code, customise and control your microbit from anywhere. Light up the LED display to create something simple in minutes, or even communicate between microbits. Or get really creative with microbit's more advanced features, like its buttons, motion detector, compass and sensors. You could create a guitar that changes the volume the more you shake it. Or a flick football game that powers a microbit scoreboard. And you can connect it to other devices, sensors and everyday objects. So you could water your thirsty plants. Or use Bluetooth to take photos with your phone. And control your music player. And you can customise the micro bit in any way you can imagine. It's really anything you want it to be. I think it's a bit like a robot. It's quite different to any other technology I've sort of used before. You just have fun with it. I can like control you. my tablet. You can make games, you can take pictures. Kind of something that senses movement. And you can just place it in your pocket and make whatever you want. We'll describe it as a future. <laughs> Oh, that's just amazing. Hopefully you're sitting there imagining all the great things that you can build with the microbit that you're going to receive. OK, let's go across to now to visit an exciting guest. Her name is Alison Vincent and she's Cisco's Chief Technology Officer for the United Kingdom. She's at home waiting to share with us her ideas for the Internet of Everything. Alison, are you there? Oh, I think she's taking a break. Thanks, James. <laughs> Hello and welcome to my living room. How rude of me. Here I am, talking to you with the television on. Let's turn that off. See what I did there? I paused the television by putting a spoon in my cup of tea. Now that's connecting the unconnected. And it's not magic. It's using something called a makey-makey board, which allows you to create a circuit between everyday objects like your tea and computerised things like televisions. Now my world is increasingly connected. I use my phone to control the music that I've got playing in my house. I can use my iPad when I'm somewhere else, like the office or the airport, to control the heating in my house. I've got the Fitbit, which tells me if I've not been doing enough exercise sitting on this sofa all day. So the world is increasingly connected. So that was the makey-makey. There's something else called the microbit, which I'm showing you here. It's a little gadget that's got an accelerometer. It's got a Bluetooth connection. It's got a compass. It's got LED lights, and it's got lots of ways you can connect inputs and outputs to it. So we'll use this again to start the television by pressing the button. But we can use the L accelerometer to change the channel by tilting. Tilt it up, the channel goes up. I'll press the button again to pause it. So that's the micro bit. But there are other things you can connect. There's things like the, the Wemo which is a way to change a switch compared to a Wi-Fi signal. So with that, you could control a light switching on and off. So let's use the micro bit again, and this time we'll use it to turn the television on, but turn the light on and off at the same time. So here we go, we turn the television on, but it's a very uneasy and the light came on. Social media and football turn the television off, and, this is really the dark. and the light goes off. So that was the micro bit. 
So the world is full of things that you can connect in fantastic ways. Show us your idea, your little big idea. Over to you, James. Alison, thank you so much. And please get a cup of tea waiting for me as soon as the show is finished. Now, I'm sure you've got some questions, so don't forget we have a panel of people waiting to take your questions on Twitter. You can tweet us and use the hashtag, hashtag LittleBigAwards. I'm joined by another guest on my lovely new sofa. This is Stephen Tallamy. He's a solutions architect at Cisco. And he really is the man driving the Cisco Little Big Awards across the United Kingdom. Thank you for joining me. Thank you very much. Right. Tell me more about the Cisco Little Big Awards. What exactly is it? So it's all about um, getting students to think about what could be the next big thing when we uh, connect the unconnected, right? Just like we've seen with Alison and her, her ideas, what ideas do you have and what ideas can you bring to us? So it might be some idea for the future. Maybe it's something that's going to help people with their health. Maybe mm -hmm. it's something for education. Maybe it's just something for fun. Yeah. Why is it called the Cisco Little Big Awards? Yeah, so... Uh, Cisco run the big awards. Big stands for British Innovation Gateway. And so this is uh, all about engaging with startup companies, so people who are making the next big technologies today. So we run that award across uh, the whole of the UK, and uh, those startups come in and pitch to us. So little big awards can be seen as like the little brother of that. And hopefully we hope that the schools who engage with this challenge maybe one day will be coming back to us with the big awards. So hopefully we've got all these students and their teachers really excited about the Cisco Little Big Awards with the videos that we've showed and, of course, Alison's demonstration just now. So, Stephen, tell us, how can they get started? Excellent. Well, so getting started is pretty easy. We've got a whole bunch of resources on the website. So the website is littlebigawards.co.uk and hopefully most of the teachers will be already registered on there. <coughs> and today we've put online a whole bunch of new resources on there to help them get started, to start thinking about their ideas, thinking about connecting the unconnected. All of these things are all available for them to see and if they need any help is there anyone they can get in contact with absolutely so oh, great. working with with stemnet we are going to be working uh, with them across the uk and we've got stem ambassadors right the way across the uk ready to help the schools we've hundreds of them ready to work so in the next couple of weeks uh the your stem uh, stem ambassadors will get in touch with your school and then they can start working and really use them because they are fantastic people. they've got a lot of experience with technology with business and they'll be able to answer all sorts of uh, questions you might have about your idea and how should the schools organize themselves i'm sure there's lots of students watching today so are they one big team should they organise themselves into separate teams, and, and how many teams can enter? Yes, yeah, so, so each school can uh, send one team through to, to the finals, but they can, of course, have as many teams inside their school as they'd like. They might have a little mini heat uh, to see who's going to come through. And the team should be around sort of six people. And they want to think about the mixture of who's going to be in that team. So there might be somebody who's really creative, somebody who's got some really good ideas, so maybe somebody who's you know, got a good idea of you know, maybe some programming skills. But you also need, really importantly, somebody who can organise the team, someone like a project manager who's going to think about, well, this is what we've got to do and now how we keep to time. So they need to operate themselves a little bit like the TV show The Apprentice. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> and how are we judging the competition? Yeah, so we're going to have regional finals um, throughout the UK. And each one of those, it's going to be a little bit like um, if you've seen Dragon's Den, it's going to be that sort of thing, right? Yeah. So they're going to come in, they're going to have five minutes and they're going to pitch to uh, a set of judges. They're going to get uh, five minutes to pitch their idea. Uh, uh, but then we need to see a lot of information as well in their documentation. So throughout the challenge, they'll be creating you know, documents and maybe just photos of whiteboards that they've had ideas. Get all that onto the website so that the, uh, mm -hmm. so the judges can actually see it. And then also they'll get a chance to do a little demo, a bit like Alison did with the, you know, the, the, the makey makey in the micro. Give us a demo, show us what it looks like. Oh, Stephen, it sounds brilliant. I think I want to enter myself. Well, I'm shame I'm 20 years too old. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm assuming there's going to be prizes that can be won because this is a challenge. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So we'll have uh, awards in those, each of those regional finals and then we'll bring it all together to a national final. So the national final is on the 9th of March 2016 uh, and the winners from each of the regions will come down uh, to that challenge and, uh, and be judged uh, to win the ultimate prize. So there's a regional heat first. Yes. And the winners from that regional heat will then go through to the grand final on March 9th, 2016. Exactly. And where's that grand final going to be held? It's going to be here in, in Cisco, uh, uh, so here uh, at the headquarters. Um, and hopefully we'll get some great judges as well. Maybe not the dragons themselves, that might be a bit scary. <laughs> <laughs> I think I might enter as myself as a dragon to judge the competition. So. Before we go, I just want to find out what you would connect to the internet. 
Ah, oh, well, so I've got a, a two-year-old. Uh, she's not quite potty trained yet, so I think I'd like to connect her nappy <laughs> to the internet. Um, I think if I do that, I could use some very advanced data analytics to predict when she's going to go for a poop and, uh, and then conveniently maybe be out of the house so I don't need to change the nappy. That sounds positively disgusting and very stinky. Stephen, thank you so much for joining me. We've given you so much information to take in over the last few minutes. So um, there is a website that you can look at, the Cisco Little Big Awards website. So if you need any further information about the Cisco Little Big Awards, please do check out that website. There's lots of information for you to consume on there. But before we wrap up today's show, I really want to share with you a video of the winning team from last year so you can hear firsthand how they participated in the Little Big Awards and why it is so exciting. Let's roll that VT. We created an app called Bookly where you can track books from all over the world straight from your smartphone or tablet. So you could track it so if your friend borrowed your book and didn't give it back, you could find out where it was and get it back and hassle them for it. My name is Jenny. And my name's Nicole. I'm Ben. My name is Sophie. My name is Zara. Iona. What we learned really has like, helped us now, especially for me. What I learned in business has helped me in maths. I learned some new skills like teamwork and uh, coding on PowerPoints and stuff like that. I learned advanced HTML coding so I can now code my own websites. I learned a lot more technology skills because I helped with the technology side but then when we went on to present here in the finals I also learned more presentation skills which I still use today. Because I was part of the um, planning team so my organisation skills are still being used today. It works on your teamwork skills, your technology skills, your design skills, your organisation skills, a big variety. Basically the students just got on with what they, they, they wanted to, um, they decided on, on a project, they decided on what they wanted to do and they were given a, a Wednesday afternoon after school just to, to tie things up and I just opened the door, let them get on with what they wanted to do, has um, encompassed a number of items within the curriculum and um, it's fitted in perfectly with, with what we do within the school. So. Excellent. I had really great fun doing it because we learned loads of new skills, but we also had time to just relax and chill about for a bit. I'm in year eight. And you all can have a go at it. I definitely recommend it because it's just so fun and also you learn so much. It's a great experience. That was brilliant. So not only can you transform the world with your ideas for technology and what you can connect to the internet, you can also increase your organisational skills, presentation skills. You can start getting together as a team and really build your team skills as well. So lots of things for you to learn if you take part in this challenge. So I want you to start thinking about your ideas now. Schools, you have until the end of December to register. And then you have your Christmas break to start planning and thinking about what you would connect to the internet. If you have any questions, of course, you can always post those to Twitter. The hashtag is popping up on your screen now. Hashtag Little Big Awards. STEMnet ambassadors will be in touch very soon to meet with you. As Stephen said, these guys are so clever. They have an awful lot of information and a lot of knowledge about technology. So make sure you make good use of your time with them. And of course, check out the website for more information. I'm James Bedford. All I want to say now is good luck and we'll see you at the grand finals.